I am here today with Marie Hamora, one of my good friends. Welcome, Marie. Hi, Heidi. I'm so glad you're here. I want you to tell everyone about yourself. Hi, I'm Marie Hamora. I'm a writer-director, originally from Manila, Philippines. I moved to LA seven years ago, and now we're doing a couple of things. Um, my short film, Harana, which means serenade in Filipino, is premiering at the Urban World Film Festival in New York, but it's going to be global, so anybody can watch. Um, and we are also premiering at the LA Asian Pacific Film Festival in October. And my first feature film, which was, which was at the Slam Dance Film Festival, um, it's called What Isn't There. It's going to have a retrospective screening at the LA uh, Asian Pacific Film Festival. I, um, I'm the executive producer and director of a digital food series called Family Style. And it's about Asian Family. food and pop culture. It's made with Stage 13, which is a Warner Brothers digital company and in cooperation with Yum MF, which is Justin Lin's digital company. I remember that because a good friend of ours um, was on the show, Grant Imahara. He was in my one of my favorite episodes, which was a sushi challenge because um, there's a myth that females can't be sushi chefs because their hands are hotter than men's hands. And we are we were calling BS on that. And yeah. Grant helped us prove it true or false. And uh, you'll see it on season one. And our season two is on, um, just got released. And we finished it during the pandemic, actually. Were you just editing at that point or were you still shooting during the pandemic? We started shooting pre-pandemic and we, I would say we shot around 60% of the show. And, you know, mm -hmm. stirrings were starting to happen. And obviously, it's, our show is called Family Cell. So there's a lot of conversations sharing meals. So we started stopping to share meals. And we we're like, okay, let's try to do this safely. But that, there was that fateful day where the NBA shut down, um, which was our last day of shooting. And we were just like, okay, let's take a hiatus. And, we, and then our wonderful executive producers at Stage 13 figured out a way how to finish the show over Zoom. We have a South Asian meal with Danny Pudi and Sunal Shah and Janina Gavankar with Parv, and they are all over the United States and they're childhood friends for 20 years. And it's wonderful because that wouldn't been, have been able to happen in person. It's the same thing I was thinking with, with film festivals right now. A lot of them are going online. Um, and, and so that means that people from anywhere can see these films that normally they wouldn't have been able to see, like Harana. Can you talk a little bit more about that film? That's your daughter's name too, isn't it? Yes, you're 100% correct. I actually named the film after my daughter. The film had a different name when we crowdfunded it. It was called A Song for Myself. And I knew always that that wasn't gonna be the final name, but I was, uh, my daughter was born four days after Picture Lock. So, and I was eight months pregnant when I was shooting it. And the, the story of Harana is that it's, a, it's about a Las Vegas cover band singer in the 1990s who writes an original song because she realizes her daughter in the Philippines is growing up without her and not knowing about her. So it's like her way to connect. And it's a short film and it's very personal, but it's funny because I wrote it um, as an, just a concept, but when I was crowdfunding, that's when I found out I was pregnant. And when I was shooting it, I was eight months pregnant. And by the time I was in post, I had a different uh, like interpretation of the story. So what's next for you? My goal is to direct for episodic television. So over the summer, I actually took the Warner Brothers TV director's workshop. I have an opportunity to have my first episode of television. It's too early to, to say what it is, but what I know now is that we will be shooting it sometime next year. So the, what I do now to prepare for it is just, you know, um, because of the wonderful lessons I learned at the Warner Brothers workshop, I know now how to prep for a show, like do it the way that the professionals do it. And so I'm just trying to do that really well. Is there anything else that you'd want to share with the, you know, like our audience um, about something that you've learned when maybe some like a mistake has happened in your <laughs> career in a week? Oh, there's been many. <laughs> you learn more from the things that go wrong than the things that go your way. And for me, I was just thinking about this which is I've learned a lot directing over Zoom the last couple of months. And because it's a different, um, it's so different than being in person, being on set with people and having that direct connection eye to eye over Zoom, I think the language becomes more important. The mm -hmm. choice of words, 
how efficient you are in saying your idea and not just babbling. And I realized that I babble a little bit. And, uh, <laughs> but doesn't? the nice way of saying it is, I like the sound of my voice, <laughs> as all directors do. But what I'm really trying my best to do is just to, to hone that craft of talking to actors, learning the, that what the actor's vocabulary is so that I could do it the most efficiently and most confidently. We're adapting, aren't we? With the yes. Zoom stuff. It's <laughs> That's a great way of saying it. It is adapting because who we don't know how long this is and we maybe a lot of prep has to be over Zoom now. And to be able to have everything we learn, we go to school for this for many years, but like we're just like all thrusted into this environment where you're just like, do your work on this thing. <laughs> You know, it, it's hard too. like, even while you're talking, I'm, I'm one of these people that likes to go, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, I have to be careful with Zoom because if you talk over somebody, over, <laughs> then the sound cuts out. But even I like to babble. <laughs> <laughs> Actors like to hear our own voices too.